Let the scriptures speak for themselves. I think we have a, another slide there that, yeah. that shows a that, that shows synaticus. Because although you don't see it in the commentaries, and I don't, I don't think it's even mentioned in the, the Nestle Allen text, these two manuscripts are pretty quirky at the end of Mark. Hmm. Yeah, I've got you it pulled up. Uh, of, 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 uh, Codex, Codex Vaticanus. Yeah, I've got the one pulled up. Um, uh, slide number eight, where you you scan in the um, what would be the the rest of the ending that there's extra yes. room for. Yes, in, in Vaticanus, uh, it ends, and you can also see this online. Vaticanus manuscript is online at the Vatican Library. At the at the in in the middle column, the text of Book sixteen eight comes to a close. A little further down is the closing title. Usually the closing title is at the end of the book and not just the beginning. But uh, but if you were to start writing Mark 16, 9 to 20, right where Mark 16, 8 ends, and if you were to compress your lettering slightly, which what scribes knew, knew how to do, you can see the same phenomenon in, in pages of Synaticus. What, what I've done here is I, I took uh, letters from the same page in the scribe's handwriting and paste them onto the page and that's what you see after there the end of uh, on, on, on the right hand side with with a uh, mark 16 9 to 20 is written in the scribe's own handwriting in the blank space now this is memorial space but keep in mind that memorial space did not have to be exact we see in codex l and we've seen codex delta uh memorial space is, is left for for the story of the woman caught in adultery so the memorial space didn't have to be you know, measured out to the centimeter. Just giving a kind of, kind of a salute to say, I recall that there was something more here in another source. That's all the scribe was doing. But to see that's all the scribe was doing, well, what that means is in the early manuscript of Vaticanus, we have a testimony that goes two ways. First, the testimony from the exemplar that says, there's, there's nothing else here, but also the testimony from the scribe that says, I remember seeing this when there was something else here mm. in, in, another, in another manuscript. Yeah, and I think so, this is um, interesting, James. Uh, sorry, I'm not trying to interrupt you. Because um, one of the things I commonly read against um, the longer ending of Mark is that, you know, these texts just are undeniable evidence that uh, the longer ending uh, was not, shouldn't have been in there. And then when we pull up these texts and look at them, um, the picture, uh, as they say, it says a thousand words, uh, quite literally, maybe a thousand letters. But um, it's not that, you know, it's it's ended in the third column or in, in the uh, second column of space and then uh, the Gospel of Luke starts. But rather, like you said, we have this memorial space. And uh, for me, um, on, on both sides of the issue, sometimes people present certain evidences as undeniable. But uh, in the case against the longer ending of Mark, um, this is one of the obviously two main texts, Codex Vaticanus, along with Codex Sinaiticus, that this is presented as the undeniable truth of the fact that, you know, the longer ending of Mark was was added in. It shouldn't have been in there. This text just all it says is that the longer ending of Mark uh, isn't in there. But like you're saying is it may say that in a footnote, but when we pull up the actual document that uh, is in question here, um, we have a lot of space here. We have what you're calling memorial space. And um, as I read in your book, um, this isn't common. We see this in separating of types of books, say between the Psalms or between prophetic literature or between the Testaments. Um, but we, we have this and this isn't the last gospel. So we couldn't say um, that, uh, you know, of course, after this, we have Luke and John. So we can't say, well, this is the last gospel. Then it's switching to other church letters, it's it's in the middle of a category. Uh, so for me, that's very interesting as strong evidence actually not against the longer ending, but for the longer ending of Mark. Uh, uh, yes, and uh, following up on that, uh, th those blank spaces in the Old Testament, uh, the, their purposes are crystal clear why they occurred. We see at the beginning of Psalms where the format changes from three columns per page to two columns per page, obviously there's going to be a gap there because of this because of this change in from three columns to two columns. The, the ruling itself had to change. And when we see one scribe's work meet another scribe's work, 
obviously the the left of a space is going to cause a gap because you can't go go back and make it line up line up exactly without without saying well one scribe is work meeting another scribe's work if they're working separately that that, that just won't happen mm. and then also at the end of of Daniel which is where where the Old Testament ends in in Vaticanus of, co of course there's going to be a, a blank space there where because Matthew will have to to start on a, a, fre a fresh page so so. Contrary to what Dead Wallace claims in his book on perspectives on the ending of Mark, um, the reasons why there are gaps in the Old Testament portions are crystal clear. There's, there's no question about it. But here we have a gap that occurs at the end of Mark, and it occurs uniquely at the end of Mark. There's no, there's, there's no such blank column, an entire blank column, at the end of the Gospels, at the end of Acts, at the end of the, at the, end of the Pauline, Pauline Epistles. Uh, we just don't don't see anything approaching this. What we do see is a, a scribe being very conservative with his parchment. He's using every 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 column he can use. Mm. Now, keep in mind that when you ended a book, you would start at the top of the next column. That's what we see the scribe do consistently. Mm. Except here, here at the end of Mark, he left this blank space. So there's nothing unusual about seeing a manuscript that has blank space at the end of a book. There is something unusual about seeing blank space and another blank column in Sinaiticus. Mm -hmm. This is the only place where we see this anywhere in the Codex. Hmm. That's really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So um, this first one on slide seven, um, this is Codex Vaticanus. Is that correct? I can't see the slides. Oh, it's okay. Um, the one where you have the text filled in uh, that we've been talking about. Um, yeah, it's okay. So Vaticanus. And then I'd also like to talk about um, Sinaiticus here in slide seven. You mentioned it being a replacement page, a, a sewn in leaf. And you talk about that uh, some in your book. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So Vaticanus, um, I guess to give some closing thoughts, um, please correct me if I'm wrong. But the way I'm understanding you is that this is, um, if anything, it's not conclusive that the longer ending of Mark should be there. Um, maybe say at worst for someone who believes in the longer ending of Mark, but at best, it, it's maybe a memorial um, in, in honor of the longer ending of Mark, uh, expecting that, 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 to be there. Exactly how, what, what I interpret this to be, that uh, the scribe, like, like I said a few minutes ago, uh, recognized, I remember seeing a manuscript where there was more here. But mm -hmm. it's not in my master copy that I'm using today. So maybe if, if I could just in, indulge in a little bit of, bit of hypothesis, maybe the scribe is thinking, I, th I'm not making this manuscript for myself. It's going to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Maybe the next guy that has this manuscript in his hands, maybe he'll want that there. Mm -hmm. Maybe he won't. Mm -hmm. I'll leave it up to him. And thus, <laughs> and thus you have the, this memorial space, which... which uh, with just a little bit of compression, fits the text exactly. Hmm. And what does this have to do with, um, if you're familiar, if you're not, I don't know the answer to this, but where these two um, were written and maybe the uh, tradition that they were wrapped around in their culture that would lead them to leave this blank or not fill it in? Well, in terms in terms of where they were made, we don't know exactly where Vaticanus was made. Okay. So Atticus, <clears throat> Sinaiticus looks like it was made at Caesarea. Now, possibly, uh, scribes didn't always stay in one place. A scribe from, from Egypt could easily find his way to Caesarea. Or a master copy from Alexandria, uh, from Egypt, could find its way to Egypt. In fact, we have, we have the case of, of origin in the early 200s of, of being first located in Egypt and then making its way to Caesarea. So, so it's it's not uh, unlikely at all to have by the three hundreds uh, manuscripts at Caesarea that would descend from a collection from Egypt, because in, in, in Egypt we have we have the the uh, the hits the early Sahidic version, and its its uh, affinities are certainly with the Alexandrian text. Okay, gotcha. No, that that's uh, very helpful. One of the books I was reading spoke of. Um, the extraction of the longer ending of Mark being a very uh, local thing that was going on. And then maybe when Eusebius or Jerome speak of it, 
um, you know, it's specific to their area being the first mention we have of, of something like this going on in, in uh, early church history. But um, 